Hello, and welcome to Vavork. I'm Brian Watrous. This is the third in a nine-part video series in which we're exploring how to build a VRO lab environment on top of VMware Fusion. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at how to build the DNS server that we'll be using in that environment. As you can see, I have listed here on the screen a product from Apple called OSX Server. Uh, as you can see, it's rather inexpensive and uh, for me personally was the solution, nice elegant solution to an issue that I need to solve for uh, building this VRO lab environment. In a previous iteration of this project, uh, the DNS server that I implemented, uh, I did by setting up bind and DNS files that used to be exposed in OSX itself. But somewhere along the way, I don't know whether it was El Capitan or what which version of OSX, somewhere along the way, Apple pulled that native DNS server out of OSX. And so I started looking to find a substitute. And what ended up happening was a coworker of mine told me, hey, Brian, just go get yourself a copy of OSX server. And uh, it has worked out great. Again, it's rather inexpensive and it does what I need, which is it allows me to have a DNS server in my Mac OS X um, machine, so my MacBook Pro. So you don't have to use this particular DNS server. You could implement things otherwise, but for me, I couldn't beat the price. It was going to take me a lot more money in terms of my time to, to come up with a different solution. So I went with this one. This here is a screenshot of OS X server, and as you can see looking over on the left side of the screen, it provides uh, a number of different servers for your system, including, as you see highlighted, a DNS server. Now if you want to use this, again you just download and install OS X server, and you start it up. Uh, when you do so, uh, you won't see DNS initially because DNS is hiding out under the advanced section. Here in this screenshot I've already expanded advanced, but um, DNS is under advanced. To use the DNS server, you need to turn it on, which you can do by clicking on the button that you see right here. So pretty straightforward. And furthermore, after you turn on the DNS server, one of the things that you'll notice uh, on the line that says status is that it's going to point out to you the IP address that's been assigned to your MacBook Pro. In particular, in my environment here, this is the IP address of my, my wireless network connection. Now, a little bit of background information in my home lab environment. I have my uh, router set up, excuse me, my DHCP server, which is also my router, set up so that it has a static IP address assignment for my wireless connection on my MacBook Pro. So every time I uh, am at home and fire up my MacBook, this is the IP address my wireless connection is going to get. Now the reason why I'm going on and on and on about this IP address is this is the IP address that all the machines in our VRO lab environment are going, going to need to use. When I'm at home, this is my IP address. On the other hand, when I go traveling, such as I am right now, and I'm in a hotel room, which I am right now, on a hotel network, which I am right now this very moment, uh, I will actually end up with a different IP address for my wireless connection. And as a result, whenever that occurs, whenever this IP address occurs, uh, I uh, need to go in and manually change the DNS settings for the various machines in my VRO lab environment. Um, I'm not going to show how to do that in the the, this video series, but I will shortly uh, come up with another video that will show you how to handle that situation. Anyways, if you can at all, it would be best it, in your case for your IP address that you see to it that you have a statically assigned IP address. If you don't have a statically assigned IP address, then potentially every time you boot up your MacBook Pro, you're going to, just as I have to whenever I go to a new hotel network, uh, you would have to, each time you boot up your MacBook Pro, go into all the machines that we're going to be creating in our VRO lab environment and reconfigure them to use whatever IP address your, your MacBook Pro happens to pick up that time. So it's much easier, rather than allowing the, for the dynamic assignment of these IP addresses, at least in your own home or business lab environment, 
you'll want to assign a static IP address. All right, so continuing onwards here, a little bit lower down, you have a little section here called the permission sections. And in here, you can see I've got my DNS server set up so that it will allow connections from any of the, the networks that my MacBook Pro knows about. You do have other choices here. If you click that edit permissions button, you have other choices such as you can say all networks, private networks, or just select networks. But for my particular deployment, I had no need to, to narrow down precisely which networks can see this DNS server. So I left it wide open. If you want to, for security reasons, clamp down on that, that's fine, but it's not necessary for our VRO lab environment. All right, continuing onwards here, the next section is labeled forwarding servers. The basic idea with forwarding servers is your DNS server, or in this case, my DNS server, is authoritative in that it knows how to answer DNS lookups, but only authoritative for DNS lookups for a particular domain. In my environment, my DNS server is authoritative for the vvork.info domain. Uh, obviously, that's my domain. In your case, the domain would be different. So my DNS server, if it's asked to resolve a, a host name such as vc.vvork.info or vro.vvork.info, if, if my DNS server is asked to perform a DNS lookup, forwards or reverse, on something in the, the vvork.info domain, then this DNS server, my DNS server, knows the answer. On the other hand, if you ask my DNS server what is the IP address for www.vmware.com, my DNS server doesn't know it. The, the only IP addresses and names that my DNS servers knows are the four that you see down in the host name section. So my DNS server is going to know how to resolve the names ESXi01, ESXi02, VC, and VRO.vvork.info. But anything else that I ask this DNS server, it can't answer. But what it can do is use the forwarding servers that I specify to find out the answers to those larger questions. So in that forwarding server section, I clicked the edit forwarding servers button. And in the window that pops up, uh, I actually had uh, entries put in here automatically. Um, my DHCP server, when it gave me the, the statically assigned IP address you saw earlier, the 10.0.0.100, that DHCP server also gave me these IP addresses. I didn't have to look them up. Um, but these IP addresses that you see here, both the, the first two, which are IPv4, and the second two, which are IPv6, those IP addresses are all IP addresses for DNS servers uh, in Comcast.com. Now, I'm uh, in this screenshot here, I'm using Comcast.com DNS servers. Um, Perhaps you use Comcast, in which case you'll quite likely use these IP addresses, or if you have a different internet service provider, you'll use their, theirs, or you'll, you'll use whatever IP addresses for whatever DNS servers you have access to, so that, again, whenever we need to do lookups, we can not only look up the IP addresses that your DNS server knows about, but also any IP addresses and names for other domains. Now, again, um, my IP addresses that you see listed here are automatically provided to me by my DHCP server. If your DHCP server is not doing the same, you can click that plus button to manually add your DNS servers. All right, so that's what forwarding servers is about. The next section, the lookup section, is where you can, if you want to, by clicking the edit lookup clients, excuse me, by, um, by uh, clicking that um, drop down list button, uh, in this section here, you can specify, I want my DNS server to respond to requests from any client that connects, or you can choose to respond only to certain clients. Again, I don't have any particular need, any security need to uh, clamp down on this. If you do, you can change it from all clients to only some clients, and then specify which clients you want to respond to. Well, ultimately, down on the bottom, that list of those four host names and IP addresses, that's what we're in here in the DNS server portion of OSX server. That, that Those are why we're here. We need this DNS server to know how to do forward and reverse lookups 
on those names. So what I did when I first came in here, the host name section was blank. What I did was click on that plus button down towards the bottom and I added four entries. I typed the names and the corresponding IP addresses and it was then at that point after I'd done all this configuration that I hit that on button in the top right hand corner and voila, I have an up and running DNS server. Uh, incidentally, what we're looking at here is uh, system preferences under Mac OS X. Uh, and as you can see, I'm looking at the network settings and I wanted to show you a few things here. Uh, notice this screenshot is taking a look at my Wi-Fi connection. And as you can see, it has been automatically assigned the IP address 10.0.0.100. Uh, the reason why it was assigned that IP address is I have configured my network connection to get its IP address from DHCP. And as I said before, my DHCP server has been configured, or I should say I configured my DHCP server to always hand out that IP address for this connection. Again, that makes life much easier. So in your router, your DHCP server, or wherever is appropriate in your environment, if you can at all swing it, you want to use a statically assigned IP address. So that's not too tricky. There's nothing really here in Mac OS X that I need to do other than to, to say, hey, Wi-Fi connection, go, go get your IP address from DHCP. Uh, on the other hand, there was something that was a little less obvious that I need to do. I couldn't get my DNS uh, server lookups to work quite right until I uh, read online something about your wired network connection. And quite frankly, I don't remember why exactly it works this way in Mac OS X, but under your wired connection, which you can see here in my example, notice that I've set the DNS server to 127.0.0.1. Now, I don't recall, this has been a while now, I don't recall exactly what IP address was being assigned to the DNS server by default, but I could not get the DNS server functionality to work reliably unless I set the DNS server on my wired connection to loop back. So I set it to 127.0.1 and then suddenly everything seems to be working fine. Now again, that was a while ago that I initially discovered that situation and found the answer online, so I don't recall all the details, but if I'm not mistaken at uh, www.vvork.info, I seem to recall that I uh, wrote a quick little blog entry about that issue. So if you're interested in knowing more about this, go take a look at www.vvork.info. As you can see, that's my last slide, so that takes us to the end of this particular video. Again, this was video number three. We talked about how to set up the DNS server. In the next video, we will be talking about how to deploy the first two of our machines in the VRO lab environment that we're building. So make certain that you go over to video number four, where I'll show you how we install and configure our virtualized ESXi servers.